Well, I'm sitting here in Tribeca Cinemas with Turk Pipkin, the founder of the Nobility Project and director of Building Hope, a documentary. Now, Turk, tell me, you've had a really great and varied career as an actor and a writer. What made you decide to, um, to start the Nobility Project? Well, that's a great question. I, it started really when I was working in The Sopranos and mm -hmm. I, um, I was playing the, that idiot narcoleptic guy in The Sopranos and I wanted to make a film about global issues and I just wasn't sure everybody was going to be all that interested in the opinions of the comic relief guy from The Sopranos, mm -hmm. which is how I reached, started reaching out to Nobel laureates to interview them for Nobility, which was our first film. and So the nonprofit really came out of, we, we were making this film about global issues and about halfway through it I realized that it was a lot bigger than just one film. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Nobility led to one piece at a time and another feature and one piece at a time led to the new one, Building Hope, and every one of the movies have helped fund the projects and the partner work that we do around the world. Now, Building Hope is about building a high school in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Why Kenya? Well, it <clears throat> goes back to the Nobel laureates again. Wangari Matai from Kenya was the founder of the Greenbelt Movement, a massive tree planting organization with, uh, with women in Kenya, and she invited me to come to Kenya and plant trees uh, with these great women and I planted trees at a school and the next thing I knew we were building a water system at a school and then we were going back to celebrate that with the community and they mentioned that oh by the way did you notice we don't have a high school and wow. I knew the kids there was no high school close I didn't realize that there was no school within walking distance and um, so we partnered to build this high school and uh, it's a great story really the first the yeah. first senior class just graduated. Oh wow, congratulations. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And before you came went over there and and did that, there there was just the kids there just did not go to high school. Well, it's like a lot, yeah. That's exactly right. Education ended after the 8th grade. There there was a high school 6 or 7 miles in one direction, but mountain miles and the other direction 30 something miles to the nearest high school and and for almost all the kids it was just too far and so, like a lot of kids in the developing world in Sub-Saharan Africa, in particular, education ends after the eighth grade. Also, mm -hmm. in Kenya, which is sort of a leader in East Africa, primary education is free, but secondary is not, even if you have a high school. And a lot of the parents can't afford to send their kids to high school. Yeah. So, to me, it seems pretty obvious you're not going to solve the problems of the world until all the kids have a high school education. That, that's yeah. not asking for so much. And we wanted to show in Building Hope, I mean, there was the the first step benefits, which is the community and all the kids that are going to go to the school for generations are going to have a high school to go to and a high school education. The second benefit is to show that it's not that hard, that we really could build high schools, that it, you know, if you have the right partners and you work with the local community, that every community in the world could have a high school. Now tell me about your book for Building Hope. Would you say that the book is a companion piece to the documentary or is it standalone? It, it's, it could be a standalone but I, I think if you read the book you would want to watch the film. You may want to mm -hmm. watch all three of the features because it kind of covers the whole arc. It's sort of the story of the school and the story of the Nobility Project as well. And now what advice do you have for for someone who wants to do something along the lines of what you're doing, whether it's make a documentary, to show something about the world, or to start a nonprofit? Well, that's a lot of options. Um, <laughs> I think maybe one. Well, I think that a lot of it is, you know, I think everyone benefits if you find ways to be connected to other people, and whether they're people in, you know, East Africa or East LA or East Texas, um, those kind of connections are something that end up being the strongest part of your life. So sometimes people, I think, see our movie and they say, I want to be a part of that. I want to donate a book or I want to, I want to build a water system for my dad or something amazing that they come up with. But sometimes people see the, our films and they say, I really loved that, but I'm not, Africa is not like my thing. Or I'm, mm -hmm. And I want to connect to something in my community. And I just always say, go out there and find what speaks to you and, yeah. and light it up. You know, yeah. open up your heart. I wrote a book with Willie Nelson called The Tao of Willie. And <laughs> Willie, uh, it was a great, great book, and, and Willie is so wonderful in the book. And at the end of the book, Willie says, um, people ask me, you know, what's next? And Willie says, just every day I get up and 
I look in the mirror and I, I say to myself, you know, open your heart, Willie, and give love a chance. And uh, he said, so far that's worked pretty well. And it, it's literally the best wisdom I've ever heard is yeah. to get up every morning and say, give love a chance. That's a great way to live.